Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Toontalk Cassie, your favorite place for all things webcomic. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and show your girl some love. Alright then guys, so today we're going to be doing the Remarried Empress episode 55. Before we get into the episode, I just want to go ahead and let you guys know I do apologize for last week. My real, my 9 to 5 work schedule had got conflicted with recording videos i ended up having to take a trip out of state flights got canceled all that kind of good stuff and my whole entire schedule was thrown off i do apologize for not upkeeping my whole you know monday through friday i will have a video up for you guys type of motto i do once again apologize and i hope you guys can forgive me and i am going to do my best to make sure my schedules do not overlap in the near future all right then let's get into this episode now Boom, boom. Long live our new king, Henry the First. Hip, hip, hooray. Ooh, king Henry. A king Henry. A king. He's a king. Oh, my goodness. Look at this man. Wow. If him and Napier ever had babies, them children are going to be absolutely beautiful. I heard your highness is still unwed. Are you thinking are you still thinking of Lady Rashta? Your highness would have been devastated. If you had seen how terribly Empress Navier treats her. What? <laughs> Why didn't you correct them? I thought about the advice you gave me about how a woman who become my queen following a war would be very unpopular with my subjects mm -hmm. we're planning to go to war and as you know it's not because of empress navier Whew, that's good to know indeed i was actually worried that he might give up on going to war because of his love for the empress but if people find out that I love Empress Navier, people are going to assume that I started a war just to win her over and resent her for it. Smart guy. He's going to have everybody think he went to war because of trash trash. That's why I'm going to use that trash can as a decoy so that any criticism is directed towards her instead of my queen. And when I conquer the Eastern Empire, I round up each and every person that insulted her, fill their mouths with rocks, and have them beg for mercy at her feet. Oh, okay, that took a little sweet turn. Hmm. That sounds great and all, but I believe you're getting ahead of yourself. Shouldn't you worry about how Empress Navia will react to the king of a country who invaded her lands? Oh, really? How are you going to win her heart as the king of a hostile nation when you couldn't even do so as the prince of a peaceful neighboring one? Bro, you woke up this morning and just chose violence, huh? You chose violence bringing about the truth like that. Remember that birds dance to attract their mate, McKenna. And we are birds after all. Okay, chicken man. <laughs> are you going to court her through the medium of dance? You don't think that will work? Oh, he is serious, you guys. He is going to fly on over there and do his little bird dance. Okay. You know what? It might just work. Don't say nothing, McKenna. Mind your business. No. It'll work. Go for it. <gasps> These characters are hilarious. Ooh, but the Empress is beautiful, as always. Aw. This pink outfit. This pink and plum outfit she got going on is absolutely beautiful if only the trade deal with lupin had gone through 
playing a key role in international trade would have put the empire at a great advantage. Yeah, if only Soviet Shu was able to pull the stick out of his butt and do what was best for the empire. Of course, that's assuming the ensuring trade had worked out in our favor. The delegation that was sent to the coronation should be returning soon. Your queen's friend. Oh. He sent McKenna. Oh, he is so bad. You could tell. By now, I'm starting to be able to tell his little birdie face. And he is mad. And he got a ring. Child, we are getting closer to the divorce episode. I just feel it in my bones. Why is he carrying a ring? The ring is a gift to you, my queen. I would like you to be my queen. After meeting you, my standards for a bride have become impossibly high. I'm disappointed you couldn't come to the coronation. Terribly, awfully, devastatingly crushed. <laughs> Such a drama, King. He's like, the bird is looking like, really? You find that cute? You really find that cute? Come on now, Empress. Your master never fails to make me laugh. Put it on. We want to see what it looks like. This is the Western Kingdoms. Yes, on the wrong finger, but we'll take it. Did she switch it over to the correct finger? I think she did, you guys. Okay, because it was stuck. Yes, Pooh, it looks good on you. Ah! Fangirl shriek. Nope. She put it away. I want to put a smile on Henry's face, too. There are plenty of bright women in the world with a lot of good sense. I'm sure you will be able to find the perfect queen. But Candace like, no, 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 bro, don't do that. Don't you say, I'm not delivering no message like that. You're right, this won't do. I'm currently organizing the deputine ball. What do you think? Does this sound friendly enough? It reads like a nice letter to a friend, doesn't it? He's like, oh, I guess, yeah. He's like, fine, fine, we'll take you. I just want to go home. All the clothes from this dressmaker are also too pretty. Why must everyone be so talented? Maybe I should just get her a popular style of dress. Oh, trash, trash. It'll be amusing to see a group of people wearing similar dresses. That's it. I should make Liberty wear the same dress as me. Really, Rashta? You're really going to play this ploy? Okay. People would think she copied me. And Viscount Lodashu won't be able to tell anyone what really happened because then he'll have to reveal that he blackmailed me into buying her dress. You know, <laughs> the dress I chose, I want the same one, but in a smaller size. Here are the measurements. You're going to give her the same dress as yours? The thing is, I think my dress is the prettiest one out there. I feel bad if I got her one that wasn't as nice as mine. Lady Rashta, you are too kind. <laughs> Lady Rashta is a trash can. Okay, that's what she is.
She is playing a very dangerous game and she don't even know the rules of the game that she is playing. Sometime later, at the deputy ball, ooh, now that right there is a pretty dress, Rashta. I mean, look at it. Huh? Look at the details. So simple, so minimalist, but yet it demands all of your attention. Now, come on. This right here. Huh? The little tiny bit of details in all the right places. Child, one thing I can say about ladies back in the days, they dress. Mm. That style is going to be what everyone wears to balls for a while. And then a year or two later, we'll see less lace and gems. There's Miss Liberty. So that's the dress. Oh. oh, the Empress waving at her. She must really like your majesty. What's there not to like? It doesn't look like Duke Ergie and Rashta are at the ball. Is it because they want to avoid liberty? They're wearing the same dress. Did Lady Rashta copy her outfit? I mean, this is the second time it happened. Uh, now seeing the dress on her, it actually looks better on Liberty. I don't know. Might seem kind of biased because I don't like Rashta, but the color seems to pop with Liberty's hair color. Why would Lady Rashta copy the daughter of a minor viscount from the countryside? I'm sure it must be the other way around. That copycat! It looks like she's copied Miss Liberty's dress this time. It seems this dress is in vogue right now. Perhaps this will help you stand out. Oop. The Empress knows how to be so classy and petty all at the same time, baby. Y'all saw what she did? She could have easily went and put that on Rashta and sided with Rashta. But to continue to remind Rashta where she is, okay, that she ain't shit, she went and put that on Liberty's shoulder. I promise you. But then, look, guys, Rashta stay starting mess with the Empress. So she's getting exactly what she deserves. Her majesty always knows what to do. She took care of it so quickly. I'm glad that she stopped things from turning ugly. What is she doing? She's writing notes. Names the people who... Is that her little death note? You know her little death notebook? Anybody watch the anime? No? Okay. What exactly is she planning to be continued? Let's go on to the next episode. All right, so here we are on episode 56. I can't believe this. Elaborate. She isn't being given the education your majesty received as a crown princess. She is being taught the same subjects you took when you were living at the Trophy Estate. She has teachers for all subjects that a young lady from a noble family would learn, such as court etiquette, dance, social grace, drawing, and piano. I see. Why does she keep copying everything that you do, your majesty? She told me that she wants to be like me. It's not uncommon to follow the same curriculum as one's role model in high society. But this isn't just anyone. It's the woman who stole my husband from me. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. 
Is she going to try and copy everything I do? Did you make any progress on the matter that I asked you to look into? I've yet to find out anything concrete, but I discovered that there are a number of servants who were fired after working for Viscount Lodeshu's family. I was able to hear a few things from one of the former servants. What did you find out? There is a restricted area in the Viscount's house that only the butler and the Viscount's family members are permitted to enter. It's quite common for nobles to restrict access to certain sections of their property. That's why I didn't report it right away. But that isn't all I heard. What else did you hear, Boo Spill? There is a baby in Viscount Lotusshoe's house. But none of the servants have seen it. Because that baby looks dressed like Rashta. The baby never leaves the restricted area. That's quite an interesting development. And that is cruel. So they're keeping the baby locked up? I would have expected something like gems or heirlooms. I'm surprised to hear he's raising a baby in secrets. Could that be the same baby I heard he brought with him when he moved here? He's not just looking for a house. He's looking for a nanny, too. What if that baby wasn't just Viscount Lotusshoe's secret, but someone else's as well? Da-da. The, the Empress done put the pieces together. Perhaps I'm reading too much into it. No, boo-boo, you reading right into it. You reading the right amount of chapters into it. Because that's exactly what it is. I wish I could just transform into a little pigeon and just... Rah, 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 but I can't. Oh, <laughs> Your Majesty... What a pleasant surprise. I've seen you here far too often. I beg your pardon? I said you come to the palace far too often. I haven't visited the palace that often, your majesty. Don't talk back to me. Oh, he do not like the Viscount. So, he still expects to be treated like an emperor, even when he's obsessed <laughs> with a former slave girl? Please, <laughs> forgive me, your majesty. The mis that misunderstanding a while back gave me a chance. I mean, it brought us together. The reason I come over to the palace is to be of service to Lady Rashta. In what way could someone like you be of use to Rashta? I'll give Rashta any help that she needs. So you should just make sure that you don't get in her way. Ooh. I told you to get my daughter a debutine dress. I didn't ask you to turn her into a laughing stock. Oh, he was mad. He was big mad. Rashta! I'm not gonna lie. She actually looks cute in this. The baby blue color complements her hair. So nice. And the little bow. And then seeing her belly, I am not gonna lie to you guys. I don't like trash can. But there's something about a pregnant lady that is just so adorable, okay? A dress like that isn't even worth a lot of money, but it seems you ruined her special day on purpose just because you were angry you had to buy her a dress. I want you to know that I, for one, am not amused. 
and yet you are the one who asked me to get you a dress when it doesn't cost that much. Oh, she got you there. <laughs> Don't take this up with me. You should keep a closer eye on your children. Are you going to let a blabbermouth like Liberty get close to the Empress? What if she let something slip that she shouldn't? You can trust her to keep a secret. Parents are blind to their children's flaws. <laughs> That's rich coming from someone who doesn't even know what her child looks like because she refuses to see him. Ooh. I know that hurt Rasta. Every time baby Ian is brought up, that shit hurts her. Yes, that's more like it. But his disgusting face get on my nerves even more. Viscount, you told me that if you were to go down, you'd take me down with you. The same goes for me. If I go down, I'm taking you down with me. What did you just say? <laughs> Even if I fall out of favor with his majesty because he finds out about my past, I'm still the mother of his child. His majesty took me in as his mistress, even though he knew I used to be a slave. He might also accept this additional element of my tragic past. But you won't be so lucky. I bet you she felt like a total badass for saying that. So don't you forget it. <laughs> Rosh does funny. Your Majesty. It would have been better if the Empress had become pregnant. <sighs> I wish Rostra would understand that, girl. Every time he see your pregnant belly, he's not excited for your child. He wants that baby to be the Empress's baby so bad. Your Majesty, how are you feeling? I feel wonderful. I'm just so happy to see you, Your Majesty. You didn't have to change the way you talk. It was cute. How are your glasses? Well... I've only just started taking them, but they're very interesting. He's like, huh, okay. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> interesting. Let's see. What classes are these? I cannot read. Is this French? It looks a bit like French. I'm going to become a mistress that your majesty can be proud of. You're already so endearing, Rashta. But, do you also tell the empress that that's all you expect from her is to look endearing? Huh. Interesting thought coming from Rashta. Rashta do realize there is a difference. He treats the Empress as his equal, whereas he treats Rashta as just, well, something pretty to look at and nothing else. Is something wrong, Your Majesty? Someone is trying to dig up dirt on you in Viscount Lotusu. Who is it? You don't need to know. In any case, don't invite the Viscount over too often. And if the Viscount is blackmailing you, you have to tell me. I can charge him with some kind of crime and either have him executed or banished. So if you are being blackmailed by him because you're hiding something from me, just tell me what it is. He won't stop coming back for more. Once you start letting him blackmail you. Huh. It does sound reassuring. Maybe he'll still love me even if I tell him everything. No. 
His Majesty may be different from Alan, but I can't risk everything on a maybe. I've got nothing to hide from you, Your Majesty. Girl, girl, girl. So please don't target the Viscount for no reason. If you end up hating the Viscount because of me, when there is no reason to, then I feel extremely guilty. Fine. Don't worry, I won't. Your Majesty, can you please stay with me until I fall asleep? I'm afraid I have some other businesses I must attend to. Be a good girl. Oh, now he's treating you like a puppy. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Oof. That was a mouthful. Let's see what some of these comments are saying. Tricky Vicky. Is that the same Tricky Vicky from Fairly Odd Parents? Huh? Oh no, that's Vicky Icky. My bad. It would have been better if the Empress had become pregnant. Ouch. I don't feel bad for Trashta. But I don't even think Sylvia Shu holds her in high regards like he does Navier. Nope, I said that earlier. She is just something for him to look at and to entertain himself with. But in his eyes, into the eyes of the court, she is not someone that they have any respect for, unlike the Empress. So it sucks for Rashta because she wants to be respected like a proper noble woman. Mortella said the emperor treats both Rashta and Navia like their ornaments. He wants Navia to run his country and not be bothersome, and Rashta to be cute and fun when he needs it. Interesting. You're actually right. Ooh. Gang Gang Vala says Sylvia Shoe is the Disgusting. He doesn't like that she's learning to read and write so he can keep her as dependent on him as possible, like some sick pet. He is intimidated by women of intellect because the relationship with them would mean them being equals, and he can't handle it. Ah, oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Fairy Penguin said, if there was a time for Rashta to tell Sylvia Shu, I think it would have been now. I think so too. She's already pregnant, presumably with his child, so he can't exactly toss her aside at those stage. She could then bank on using the following months and having the baby to get back in his favor. Fairy Penguin. Fairy Penguin, you are smart. Rashta, not so much, but you, very much. She might never be the empress or a member of high society, but that should ensure that she is able to live comfortably. Lying now will only come back to bite her later. And it's going to be a big bite. <laughs> Woo, I know, because she is... Da -da -da -da. This wonderful person said, largely to blame for using and manipulating her into feeling like she's going to be tossed aside, possibly separated from another child back into the life of a slave once Sylvie gets tired of her. There's a lot of parallel here between Henry VIII and his first two wives, Catherine and Anne. Huh. Okay, let me read this comment real quick. For the same person to say, yeah, she could have pulled the hours forced into being a slave with no choice card. And he probably would have gone for it. I think people are giving Rashta a much harder time than she probably deserves. As she obviously insecure and being manipulated from all sides. And she really wants is a secure home where she's loved and sunny be tossed aside to be a slave again. She might be falling into worse deeds, but at its core, the men in her life, Lotus Shoe, Sovi, 
and the embassy are all largely to blame for using and manipulating her into feeling like she's going to be tossed aside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to keep going down the comments, but yeah, I, I definitely feel that. Um... She is being manipulated and played and coming from being a slave. I do. that. That's why I haven't completely called her trashed. Okay. Like, I don't know if you guys used to listen to me do Sub-Zero. I used to call Headband. I never missed an opportunity to call Headband just that Headband. I completely forgot that man's name. And every time it would show up in print, my head would automatically translate it to Headband. But in the case of Rashta... Sometimes I do slip up and call her trash duck or trash trash or trash can, trash bag, trash face, um, trashy eyes, cry baby trash trash. What else have I called her? You know, so sometimes I slip up and I call her these kind of names, but for the most part, I do recognize her as Rashta. And the reason why I would continue to say her name whenever I don't slip up is because, you know, I want to remind myself that she could have been saved, okay? She could have been better. I mean, of course, we needed her to be what she is right now for our girl to get together with her dude, a.k.a. King Henry. But she could have been a good person. You know what I mean? Circumstances, all of that played a part. Her environment, the way she was, I honestly... At this moment, although it would have been best for Rashta to tell Sylvia Shu the truth, I understand her mindset. You know, with everybody playing mind games and telling her that it is so easy for her to be discarded by the emperor, her being separated from her previous child, which is still so young. I'm, I believe her firstborn, Ian, is still being held, so he, he's not even walking. You know, he's not walking, he's not crawling based on what I see. So I'm going to assume the baby's about six, seven months. You know, she's going through all of that. She hasn't even dealt with the emotional impact of that situation. And in her head, pregnancy hormones combined, she is making some really dumb choices. But at this moment, she feels as if these choices making a lot of sense to her. So I don't completely fault her for making these type of choices, ladies and gentlemen. I don't. Her environment, her emotional state, all of that combines together to create that, you know. But nonetheless, <clears throat> I'm here for whew, the Empress. And King Henry's, you know, getting married. And the look on Sylvia Shu's face when he hears the news. That's really what I'm here for, okay? All right, Cass is not here to pick or bully on nobody. I'm just here to see Sylvia Shu's face when he finds out the Empress is marrying a whole bag, an extra large snack bag. Ow. <laughs> so... With that being said, you guys, that's going to be it for today's episode. Be sure to leave your comments down below. Check out the description box for the link where you can read further ahead on this comment. Also, check out the description box for the link to the Facebook fan page. No, no, group. Facebook group. If you haven't already, be sure to join the Facebook group if you can. That is where I communicate until we hit a 1,000 subscribers on this channel. And then I'll have access to youtube community and i'll be able to post on there okay last but not least if you guys made it this far and you haven't already man you know i gotta say it but go ahead and hit that subscribe button click on that little bell notification show me some extra love i really appreciate it i will see you guys next time peace